Hey guys, Ultra Healthy Video Game Nerd here. Uh, good to see you again. This is another pickups video. Uh, I'm going to introduce a number of the games that I've got over the past couple months. This is not everything. Uh, this is kind of just a selection. I have added a number of the rarest things that I have uh, at this point now here. A number of the things that I've bought over the past few months have been things like I already owned the cassette alone and now I've gotten rid of that and bought it back complete. So I don't really need to introduce those very much. I'm just going to try to stick with things that are really just brand new for me. Uh, there's some really cool stuff here. So let's, let's get started and take a look. First of all, we have... Uh, this is the Japanese version of Conquest of the Crystal Palace. It's called Maten Doji. Doji? Maten Doji. In Japanese uh, great game I really like it this is quite cheap for a platformer on the Nintendo it's like you know 40 bucks complete in really good condition most pretty good Famicom games are more expensive than that next on this this was a real biggie for me holy diver yes it's too goddamn hard but I still like it God, I fought for my life and got to level 4 on this son of a gun uh, apparently there's like a, a full release coming out in the West finally and it's like officially licensed or something that's that's really interesting but I have the original <laughs> moving on uh, this is the Japanese version of zombie nation it's called Abarembo Tengu here I do actually have the American cassette of uh, Zombie Nation, I have a legit copy. I'm not going to sell that just yet. The reason why I'm introducing this as something new is because the main character graphic is different in the Japanese and American versions. In this one, it is a Tengu face, uh, and in the American version, it's a, a samurai head that's been cut off. And I read in the liner notes of the official soundtrack CD that the American idea, the one with the zombie head, was the first idea, and they actually changed it for the Japanese release, and it's usually the other way around. Uh, so I found that kind of interesting. So really finally glad to have this yet. It has a sticker on it right here. This can be removed pretty easily. I'm actually gonna wait for the temperature to warm up a little bit before I do it. Uh, it's still kind of the dead of winter here, but I can get that off cleanly. Should be able to, I've done it in the past. Next up, more Famicom. This is Hammer and Harry 2, Daiku no Gensan 2. Great, well, is it a great game? Uh, this was released in 1993. Now that's a very late release for the Nintendo. And it is a really cool platform and I, I really like it. I do like a lot of iRooms games. It's a bit loose uh, for a game from 93. Uh, the, the gameplay is a, is a little sloppy, but in, in that really nice Nintendo way. So this was not all that expensive actually. Uh, and the last one for the Famicom for now, this is Batman The Return of the Joker. I had never ever played this. Uh, looking at the video of it online in, on YouTube made it look really good. And uh, it, it is pretty good. Sunsoft, I know there's a lot of people who, who swear by Sunsoft's 8-bit games. Um, may, maybe I'll save the criticism of this for later. This is just, just introducing this. So I did get that. That's all hard case in the Japanese version. Alright, uh, moving on. This is PlayStation 1. I did finally get Panzer Bandit. This was one of the only 2D action or shooting games on the PS1 that I had never played. Uh, and the, the video of it kind of made it look a little simplistic, so I had been on the fence for a long time. But it was not expensive, you know, it was like 45 or 50 bucks. So I grabbed it, and I'm really glad I did. It is not as complex as Guardian Heroes, obviously, but that's okay. It's actually really clean. It's very good. It's really fun to play. I'm gonna have to work on this more. It's pretty hard on one-player mode. Right. Uh, we got one thing for the Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive here. This is the Japanese version of Final Zone. Now, I had the cassette alone, the American version, and, and did let that go eventually. So... There's a special reason why I am introducing this right here, and it's because the Japanese version, this little red sign here says that it's the limited edition. Now, I'm not completely sure that there was uh, a version that was not the limited edition, but what it has in it is postcards, um, illustrated postcards. There's four of them in there. You can see that's the one with the main artwork from the front of the case also and the other ones are kind of like black and white or black and gold 
Uh, but these, this is totally kick-ass. Uh, Wolf Team's box art in Japan was the shit. It was awesome. It's extraordinary. This one is no exception. And it's not particularly expensive. Well, no, it's, it's dirt cheap, really, when it comes down to it. Uh, the game Final Zone is not the best uh, run-and-gun shooter, but I, I actually do personally like it. Obviously the music, this is what made me like Wolf Team. And, um, I think that was it. We've got a friend. We've got a friend. Hi. It's talking. It's yelling and screaming. Saki, do you want to talk about video games? This is not a new pickup. I've had this for so long. Get out of my face. Got work to do. <laughs> Next up, for the PC Engine, the Japanese TurboGrafx-16, it's Dead Moon. I did not have this. This is really fun. And those of you who are following me on social media probably saw that I did finish the second loop. I beat it on hard mode. Mm, yes! And also one more for the TurboGrafx-16 or the PC Engine. I did finally get Soldier Blade! Definitely the best of the three soldier games. I'm gonna have to say this is almost certainly the best. I do like Superstar Soldier. Final Soldier is great. Great. It's it is fun to play. I think this is definitely the best. And God, the price skyrocketed on Yahoo Auctions recently. It's awful. It was cheaper at a store. Moving on, the Sega Saturn. I finally did get it. This was one of the only 2D shooters on the Saturn I had never played. It's Q Kyoku Tiger 2. Uh, Q Kyoku Tiger was called Twin Cobra in America. The Genesis version was released in America as Twin Cobra. Uh, in Japan, it was released on a number of systems. My favorite is the PC Engine version. This is the sequel. This is not actually done by Toa Plan. Toa Plan was long gone by the time this came around. It was made by Takumi, who was one of the several companies that splintered off away from Toa Plan. And it was actually directed by Masahiro Yuge, who wrote the music for Truxton and Grindstormer and Fire Shark. He didn't write the music for this game, but he oversaw it. Funny, huh? I, I haven't made a solid opinion on the game itself yet, though. I don't know. It's, I'm not sure yet. One more for the Sega Saturn. This is Gekirinda. Um, this is a kind of simplistic arcade shooter and I actually do enjoy it. It is pretty damn fun. It is not quite as expensive as some of the other Saturn shooters, uh, but I am enjoying it. It is really fun to play. It is really good. It's not quite as hard also, I think, as a lot of the other games, which is quite nice. So that's very good. Now those are the games. Now this time around actually some of the most interesting and actually really the rarest things that I've picked up over the last couple months have been game soundtracks. For people who have ever come to Japan and ever attempted to buy older video game soundtracks, you may have discovered they're extraordinarily expensive. Um, 30 or 40 dollars is the really cheaper ones and the expensive ones go closer to a thousand or more. Um, and that does not necessarily mean that those are the ones with the best music, it just may mean that they had the least copies made. Uh, the Mystical Ninja games, the two on the Nintendo 64 are some of the most expensive ones. They are between $800 and $1,000. Really good music, but they're only looped once. So I'm personally am not interested in them. The Donkey Kong games for the Super Nintendo, the Donkey Kong Country games, two in particular is extraordinarily expensive. I think it's over $1,000. I've seen it sell for at least $1,300. I did not get any of those. Uh, but the ones that I did get are very, very rare. What are they worth? Not quite sure. It's hard to say. First of all, I did buy this from a store in Osaka recently. This is a Choro Q game. This is the Rainbow Wings, a Choro Q official soundtrack CD. There are four Choro Q games that had OSTs released. They are all extremely hard to get. There are very few copies. Some of the Choro Q music is extraordinary, and even the ones that aren't extraordinary are very good. I think maybe two and three might have the best music. Some of it is really kind of progressive rock sounding. This one is very good. It was $90 when I got it uh, from a store. I'm not quite sure how much it's actually worth. The other three, not this one, all other three came up 
on Yahoo Auctions shortly after I bought this one and sold for outrageous prices. One sold for 200. One, I'm not quite sure I didn't fall out to the end, but it was bid up to at least 250. And that was days before it ended, so it must have gone up probably 100 more. The other one sold for 600 godforsaken dollars. And when I saw that, I was just like, really? For Chorokyu? And it wasn't even like the best one musically. I think three is really good musically and it got an official CD. So that might be the most valuable one. This was 90 at a store. If it came up on Yahoo Auctions, I'm not completely sure. It's hard to say because I haven't seen it yet, but that was probably a good purchase. Uh, next up is one of the rarest things in this house. That doesn't mean it's the most valuable thing in this house, but is one of the rarest things that I have. It is, can you see this? That is not the game, Alice in Wonder Dream. That is the official soundtrack CD of Alice in Wonder Dream for the PC Engine. This was almost certainly the kind of thing where you had to send in the registration card and order it through the mail at the time. God only knows how many copies there are of this. I've never, ever seen it anywhere else. Um, and I'm not letting it go. <laughs> I really loved Faces games. I got all their games early on when I bought the PC Engine. The Honey and the Road, Honey in the Sky, and this. And there's an official CD. I mean, there were so few. I had seen an advertisement for it, I think, in the back of one of the games. And I figured it had been cancelled. <laughs> so, finally got it. It's mostly arranged versions, which are actually better than the arranged versions on the other CD that had the two Honey games on it. And then, as, as the other ones are the same, the last track has all the songs from the actual game, the original version, all squeezed in just into one track, looped only once. So I'm going to have to edit it and, and, and pick it out and edit, extend those and make my own CD with it. But I'm, I think I'm just going to keep this <laughs> just, just to have it. Now, this next one is huge. It's been on my list for years and years. Finally did it just because I hadn't bought anything like super expensive in a long time. So glad I did it. This is a masterpiece by every sense of the word. It is the official CD to Zero Divide 2. These games are, by today's standards, crap 3D fighting games for the PS1. The music is legendary. The guy who did it, his name is Ota... Akihito. And I believe these two Zero Divide games are the only music that he's ever really made that has been released as CDs. I mean, is it progressive rock? I, I suppose it's just all over the place. It's some of the most experimental, craziest synth sounding music I've ever heard. And uh, I mean, he did almost the almost all of the songs on the first one as well. There were two by another person. That one's also extraordinary. That one, for some reason, was only like 50 bucks. Apparently, there are very, very few copies of this one. I finally got it. After all these years, I'm a proud owner. And uh, I know what you're saying to yourself. Couldn't you just listen to the music on YouTube or, or just uh, rip it? It can be ripped. Some of, us, some of us live by a different standard, okay? <laughs> And I want to have the real thing. So I did finally get Zero Divide 2. With a spine card. Kicks ass. Um, so keep in mind, this is not one month. Uh, this is several months worth of stuff. Because there are... Several of these things are over $100. Um, and hope you enjoyed the video. Those are my, my pickups recently. This is what it looks like when you're very, very cautious about what you buy. And don't just screw around like oh i just picked up this cassette of mario 3 or oh yeah it was like kind of cool so i bought a little zelda figure this is dead serious retro gaming that's about all <laughs> see you in the next video thanks for watching take it easy